so far to discuss a specific vector, we've been giving that vector as a linear combination of some basis vectors. So to talk about this vector x, y, we say it's the basis vector x plus the basis vector y. Now a shorthand for expressing that linear combination is to put the coefficients of the basis vectors in a column. So the column vector that corresponds to the vector x, y would be 1, 1. And the first entry in the column means that the coefficient on front of the basis vector x is a 1. And the second entry in the column means that the coefficient on front of the basis vector y is also a 1. So in general, if we have a basis of a space with n different vectors, b1 through bn, a general vector in that space can be expressed as a linear combination of these basis vectors. And rather than writing out this full linear combination, we can just put the coefficients of the basis vectors in a column like this. So in the same way that column vectors are a more concise way to express arbitrary vectors in a vector space, we can do a similar thing to represent linear transformations in a space. So we said that we can define linear transformations by giving what vectors they transform the basis vectors into. So let's go back to this example of the transformation R we've talked about that rotates vectors in the plane 90 degrees counterclockwise. We said R transforms the basis vector X into the vector Y, and it transforms the basis vector Y into the vector negative X. And we said knowing these two things allows us to figure out what R will do to any vector in the plane. So rather than specifying the behavior of R by saying what it does to these two basis vectors, we can instead put the column vectors that correspond to the vectors that the basis vectors are transformed into side by side in what's known as a matrix. So the matrix corresponding to this linear transformation R, its first column is going to be the column vector representation of the vector that X is transformed into. So we know R transforms X into the vector Y and the column vector representation for y is 0, 1. So 0, 1 is going to be the first column of the matrix that represents R. Now, the second column is going to be the column vector representation of the vector that the basis vector y is transformed into. And y is transformed into the vector negative x, whose column vector representation is negative 1, 0. So negative 1, 0 is going to be the second column of the matrix that represents R. So I want to emphasize how important it is to understand this connection between linear transformations and matrices. So if you've done linear algebra before, you've maybe just seen matrices as rows and columns of numbers and maybe didn't understand this connection to linear transformations. And this makes some aspects of linear algebra um, confusing. <laughs> For example, you've probably seen this general rotation matrix that rotates a vector in the plane by some arbitrary amount theta. And trying to memorize this thing and figure out where cosines go and where sines go and where the negative signs are is a little bit confusing and it's not clear why things are the way they are. But if you understand a matrix as a representation of a linear transformation that tells you how the basis vectors are transformed, then this matrix becomes much easier to remember because you can just derive the thing anytime you need it. So let's look at how we would do that. The first thing to do is to figure out how the basis vectors are transformed under this linear transformation. So if we rotate the basis vector x by some arbitrary amount theta, it's going to be transformed into the vector cosine theta x plus sine theta y. And the column vector corresponding to that vector is cosine theta sine theta. Now the basis vector y 
is transformed into the vector cosine theta y minus sine theta x. And the column vector for that vector is negative sine theta cosine theta. So we know the matrix corresponding to this linear transformation. Its first column is going to be the column vector that represents the vector that x is transformed into. And the second column is going to be the column vector representation of the vector that y is transformed into. So the full matrix is going to look like this. And you don't have to bother with memorizing where the cosines go and where the sine goes and what terms have a negative sign on them. You can just go through this derivation each time you need this matrix. So we've talked about how to efficiently represent vectors and how to efficiently represent linear transformations as matrices. Now I want to look at how to carry out the application of a linear transformation on a vector using matrices and column vectors. So previously, if we wanted to apply a linear transformation to some arbitrary vector, we would begin by expressing that vector as a linear combination of the basis vectors. And then we would apply R to each of the basis vectors individually using this property of linearity that all linear transformations have. So if we wanted to apply the transformation R to the vector x, y, we would begin by rewriting x, y as x plus y. And then we would have R operate on x and y individually. And we know what it does to both of these vectors because that's part of how we define it. We tell how it transforms the basis vectors. So x is transformed into the vector y, and y is transformed into the vector negative x. So we know that when r acts on x, y, it produces the vector y minus x. Now how would we do the same operation using matrices and column vectors? So this is usually done by putting the matrix corresponding to the linear transformation to the left of the column vector that you want the linear transformation to act on. And then there's a set of rules for how you actually carry out this transformation. And at first blush, they're pretty cryptic rules and it's not clear where they come from. In the next video, I'll try to explain where these rules actually come from. For now, I just want to apply them. And if you've seen them before, then this will look familiar. The gist of it is that we go row by column. So the result of applying this transformation to this vector is going to be another vector. So we're trying to figure out how to compute the two entries of this resulting column vector. The first entry we get by taking the first row and doing a pairwise multiplication with the column vector and summing the thing together. So we have the first column entry and the resulting vector is going to be 0 times 1 plus negative 1 times 1 or negative one. And then to get the second entry, we do the same thing, but with the second row. So the second entry will be one times one plus zero times one, or one. And the column vector negative one, one, that we arrived at corresponds to the vector negative x plus y, which is exactly what we got when we did this the way we previously did. So it seems like this method of multiplying a column vector by a matrix does work, even if the rules are a little strange. And my goal in the next video is going to be to demystify this weird multiplication process.